Uh, welcome to the inaugural presentation of the College of Liberal Arts Learning Series. Robert Cox and myself, Mark Miller, in this session will be looking at spam, phishing, and malware. We will also be examining some issues of social engineering, among others, where illegitimate emails or phone calls appear to be legitimate. There are recent examples that made national news. For example, an aide to John Podesta, chairman of Hillary Clinton's campaign, accidentally labeled an illegitimate phishing email as legitimate. This email directed Podesta to change his password on a bogus website. This is how the hackers got into the campaign's email. Uh, we have also seen Sean Spicer, Trump's press secretary, tweet his password twice in two days. <laughs> so Robert crazy. has created a PowerPoint presentation and def that defines the term <coughs> spam, phishing, and malware, and how to identify and respond to such threats. So without further delay, here's Robert. Thank you, Mark. All right, right off the bat, what is spam? So we're going to look at the term used to describe unwanted. Notice it's unwanted junk emails that are typically distributed in bulk. Spam messages will typically contain commercial content. Uh, examples include pornography, pharmaceuticals, dubious financial transactions, or too-good-to-be-true offers. In most cases, spam emails are sent with fraudulent intent, but there are also cases where Reputable companies or private users send the email, uh, mass emails too. So, spam can be used to launch phishing attacks where users are sent emails tricking them into updating their personal data details online via a fake website, imitating a bank or similar. The tricky part here is that the phishers pretend to be someone you know like a bank or even a department from where right here at Purdue to make you think that they are trustworthy. That's why it's so important to keep in mind that CLAIT or any other Purdue department will never under any circumstances ask you for your login information via email or web form. Anyone asking for this type of information is uh, undoubtedly a fraud. Okay. Spam can be used as a means of distribu distributing uh, malicious software, which, you, we, we, which can install key logging software on your PC without your knowledge. And you don't want the key logging software. Okay, farming is a term used to describe the process of redirecting users to a fraudulent copy of a legitimate website. Again, this is the aim of stealing <coughs> uh, personal data and passwords from criminal intent. The definition of farming might also be extended to include targeted advertising or the pushing of people toward products or serv and services. Uh, you see at the bottom of Amazon and uh, uh, some other eBay, people who have bought X have also bought Y. Mm -hmm. you know, they're mm -hmm. basically, and if you do, you'll save $110. Basically, <laughs> they're, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, it, it could be included in that definition of farming. All right, here's a phishing email example, and uh, common, keep in mind these four common traits when you get an email like this. Uh, you got threats, you got links, and you got popular company. So this one's what, Facebook and spelling. Those are the four things that you look for in an email that normal people would, wouldn't do. I mean, mm -hmm. some normal people don't know how to spell, but because <laughs> they use, they use uh, you know, shortcuts. Yeah. But uh, uh, anyway, so this is kind of uh, showing you the spelling, showing you the links in the email, um, and threats. A threat is uh, uh, what's going to happen to your account. This is the biggest one that people get scared of right here. Oh my, no, my account's going to get blocked. Oh no, if something's going to happen. I need it, you know. And here's your popular company. All right. And you spot seven reasons why this next clip of, of an email is a phishing email. Remember, it only takes one uh, to uh, reason to trash it. Um, um. Just to show you, if you hover your mouse over this link, uh, this link, this is a verify now, and it shows you a different, uh, shows you some kind of a website, you know. Which really means nothing, but if you was from a popular company, that would mean a lot because it should have that company name in there. Okay, here's your seven circle reasons, <laughs> starting with the very first one you know, on your header. Dear, does it say your name? 
Uh, when does fishing attacks most likely occur? At night time? Um, does it say your name again? You know, mm -hmm. okay, two different names. Uh, deer internal, I said deer attack, you know. Um, essential to carry out clarification, except your username will be destroyed. It's kind of like a fragmented sentence there. Uh, there's your link, and there's your threat, and it's signed by somebody we don't know. Okay, so there's seven reasons there, and here's the actual explanation. Not addressed to you directly, late at night, not my name, twice addressed, wrong and differently. Fragment, that number four was, uh, there it is, that kind of a fragmented sentence. Um, as well as the next, neither of them, correct. Uh, embedded link with hidden URL, hover over the mouse to see it. Here's your threat. That's the bad grammar there too, remember the one that, and signed by who, where's the name, address, and phone number. Remember, any one of these, if it looks suspicious, you uh, trash it. Use these tests when checking emails. The no test, is it some, from someone you know? The receive test, have you received this from a send, the, this sender before? Mm -hmm. The expect test, were you expecting this with this <coughs> attachment or with this email link? Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, me and my wife, we send emails all the time, but with links, you know, hey, go to this website, I want to buy this, or, you know, asking me to buy something from here. That's a spam. She's always spamming me. <laughs> uh, the sense test. Is this email from the sender with the contents that's described in the subject line and name of the attachments make sense, you know? Mm -hmm. And the virus test, we do this automatically pretty much for you. And I'll show you an example of one here later in, in a few minutes. Always check, okay, that's all part of it. What do you, if you get one of these, there's the first thing right there. Don't respond. If you don't, if you do receive spam, it's important to never respond, even if an unsubscribed link is in there. By responding, you're alerting the spammer that your is a valid email address and that you'll just increase the likelihood of receiving more. Okay? Can we forward it though? Huh? Forward it. Because yeah, I always I'll forward you. it. I'll show you how to forward it, yeah. To the, yeah. To the, to the abuse. abuse, yeah. Uh, I'll show you how, that, how to do that. Here's another example. Here's the popular company, Amazon. Uh, we get a lot of these. Obviously, I've gotten this one before, okay? That looks like a legitimate link right there, doesn't it? But when I hovered over it with my mouse, this is what I got. Masterpublicspeaking.net traffic. What is that about? You know. And plus, I didn't have an order. So how did come I got an order all of a sudden? Maybe I'll have to check and see if I got an order. <laughs> so that's uh, that's the sample ones. Let's look at some live ones here. Okay. I'm gonna turn my mouse around here. I just got two today. Uh, this is pure spam. This first one right here. Because uh, it says "Hi, customer," I don't even recognize that. <laughs> this looks like it was made in Germany. It's got a DE uh, Denmark uh, a, a pension there. Here's one from. It's with an attachment. Download uh, at tilde .shtml. Yeah, so some weird attachment. And look what they're asking for. They want my ID. They want my password. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. They want it all. It's two steps to go reaching. <laughs> they are bold, is right. Um, uh, this one, I can't, maybe I'm right click here. It's not showing. It usually shows in a corner. I think I got it hidden because of my mouse, the way it's set up. All right. Here's the legitimate one um, that we got from, from for ADB. So those are legitimate. This is a legitimate one, but I wanted to show you what the next one was, because this is how I got my W-2. I always got to have it electronically, because uh, I was expecting this any time. Mm -hmm. This one I was not expecting. <laughs> says to uh, produce staff and faculty, yeah. please visit, you know, tax information. Well, look at this address, <laughs> www.produce.com. Produce not .com, and plus there's no period between www.purdue. Mm -hmm. 
So it looked at first look legit, but if you're not thinking about it, it it's easily it, it goes right through you, you know. Mm -hmm. But when you study it a little bit, you know, hey, there's no dot edu, there's no right. period between it. So there's this is definitely a a phishing uh, um, email, and I think half the campus got this anyway, yeah, so yeah, everybody most everybody got <laughs> this. But I wanted to show it as an example. Here's another spam. Um, Kingston, I don't know who Kingston is. And the features is blocked, I didn't enable it. Oh, it's pills. There we go. Uh, click here. Um, I don't see any link on that one. That's probably actually going to something, but it doesn't show. And uh, Purdue, we got them from Purdue today, it sent out several of these. And this one is the most recently one came out January 20th, so not too long ago. Phishing and other kinds of tax scams mm -hmm. rank number one. Don't fall victim. Okay. This is a season approach as scammers are preparing to commit fraud, so be prepared to combat to back to at it. Anyway, Purdue today has also sent uh, other stuff and it was last uh, December or they had another more stuff on that. Um, did I catch it all? Uh, look at that. I just get everything. Here's Mike from Dropbox. Mm -hmm. I don't even have a Dropbox account, so that rules this one out. I get those a lot. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so that's another clue. You know, I get it from uh, um, this one bank all the time. I don't even bank with them. They said I have money, you know. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a clue. PayPal, here's a good one. I have a PayPal, but uh, this doesn't look, uh, this doesn't look, I don't know what that is, but. Okay. It says they're not unable to update my PayPal account, so oh well, good for them. I'm glad they, they're not able to update it. System alert. Um, I don't even know who this is from. It says mail.arizona.com. The name registered to this account. Well, you know, what account, what system, what what are they talking about? You know, it, it, it just says Fidentium, um, it's a WordPress site, obviously. <laughs> But I don't even know that company, Fidentium.com. So I could go, go look at my profile. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't do it. There's another GSX. See, just GSX user instead of who I am and so forth. This is an automated message. The mail delivery or to uh, dear member, another one. Look at that, uh, the uh, IP number, CMS, and HTTP, all of the stuff's in backslash, wildcats.unh.edu, so somebody from one of the universities, I don't know, University of, I don't know. Anyway, let's go on, there's, there's so many of them here that I just started collecting them, I like this one too. All Ink to jobs. <laughs> I mean, congrats. I got a congrats for this. Uh, hope which you in honor we accept one spot left for you. There's lots of time to give you this. <laughs> one for you. Um, so I don't know. Okay, here's an unsubscribe. Let's, uh, let's unsubscribe. <laughs> what did I say about that? Okay. Anyway, those are some lines of examples just to give you an idea. Um, uh, I hope that helps a little bit. I think I'll turn this over to Mark. Notice like uh, UPS, you'll get like notices saying, UPS tried to deliver a package, but we couldn't. And you get the same from like Federal Express, UPS, USPS. Uh, <coughs> so, and you're like, well, you never gave me my email address. How are you contacting me? They're not telling me what address they tried to send it to or anything like that. So another thing to look out for. Um, and some common phishing attacks we've seen here at Purdue are emails stating that if you don't act now, your email account will be deactivated, deleted due to being overloaded <laughs> or a security concern. Email saying that your account password needs to be changed ASAP, and they usually provide a link for doing that. And then there's also social engineering phone calls that come from like Microsoft or other tech company like McAfee or whatever. Um, so, if you're concerned about your email quota, say you get one and you don't really want to like, you know, check the links, you don't want to like really research all that stuff, you can verify this information on your own. 
uh, to find your email quota, you can just go to OWA, and then when you log in, there's a little gear right there. If you click on the gear and then go to options, it shows you this. And so you see right here, mm -hmm. you're only using 85.66 megs, and then you got you know five gigs that you can use. So that's one way of verifying your information. Um, if you want to check your password expiration, you go to purdue.edu slash apps slash account, log in there, and here it tells me this is when I changed my changed my password very recently on the third, and that I had at the time I took the screenshot 361 days uh, before I had to change it again. Uh, as far as the my phone calls go, I've gotten a few at home. Um, where they you know, say, you know, this is Bobby from Microsoft, and uh, you know, you notice that you have a virus on your computer, which Microsoft has better things to be doing than to be uh, looking through my you know, logs and finding out if I have a virus or not. <laughs> Plus, they don't have my uh, phone number. Um, and so, if you don't have a life like I do, um, I just like started messing with them and saying, okay, well, what's the IP address of the computer that you're saying has a virus? And then that gets them to go and find a uh, supervisor because they don't know how to answer that. Um, but yeah, you just they totally just hang up on them. Don't give them any information because if you do follow what they say to do, they will have you go to a website which allows them to take control over your computer mm -hmm. and they can actually encrypt your hard drive and therefore charge you money for them to decrypt the money. So this is like a ransomware kind of thing as well. Um, we've actually had some people do that and then we've had to rebuild their computer and they lost mm -hmm. any information that might have been in there. Mm -hmm. uh, so something to look out for. And with that, let's send it back to Robert. Okay, a little bit about malware now. This is a, a, a big topic. Yeah, we have a lot of malware. Um, this term we use for any software that gets installed on your machine and performs unwanted tasks, often for some third party's benefit. The category of malicious code that includes viruses, worms, and Trojan horses. Uh, it can range from being simple annoyances like pop up advertisements. You know, you hit a website and all of a sudden you get a pop up to cause serious computer invasion and damage, stealing passwords and data, infecting other machines on the network. Uh, some program malware programs are designed to transmit information about your web browsing habits to advertise them or, to, or other third party interests without you knowing. Uh, so a good definition of virus is software that can replicate itself and spread to other computers or that are programmed to damage a computer by deleting your files, reformatting the hard disk, or using up the computer memory, causing your computer to go slow. Adware, uh, software that is financially supported or financially supports another program by displaying ads when you're connected to the internet. Spyware, software that, uh, I don't know how to say that word, surreptitiously, gathers information and transmits it to interested parties. Information gathering includes visited websites, browser system information, and your computer's IP address. Browser hijacking software. So advertising software that modifies your browser settings, creates desktop shortcuts, and displays intermittent advertising pop-ups. Once the browser is hijacked, the software may also redirect links to other sites that advertise or sites that collect web usage. We get quite a bit of this here, mm -hmm. uh, a uh, browser hijacking software. I just saw where uh, one of our users had one that he had a different home page and somebody else's home page is on there instead of his. Um, so how does this malware get through? <coughs> so the malware writers are very inex experienced in using tricks to get the users to download their malware. Software that comes bundled with other software is called Trojan Horse. Peer-to-peer -peer file sharing software bundles various types of malware that are categorized as spyware or adware. Software that promotes to speed up your internet connection or assist with downloads will often contain adware. Another common way to infect a computer is through email mm -hmm. containing a similarly benign link or an attachment. So that's the biggest one. 
Malware can exploit security holes. So this is a little bit of information on how it, how it works. Uh, security holes in your browser as a way of invading your machine. So that's why we do updates uh, constantly uh, to make sure we block some of these holes. And, um, some websites need to, that software is needed to view the site and attempt to trick users into clicking yes, thus installing software onto their machines. Another trick is if you click no, many error windows will pop up. All of a sudden they just come, they just start flashing up. Um, other sites will tell you that you're using a certificate make, uh, makes their site safe, which is not the case. Certificate verification means only that the company that wrote the software is the same as the company whose name appears on the download prompt. Mm -hmm. Some malware provides no uninstall option and installs code in unexpected hidden places, mm -hmm. like the Windows registry, or modifies the operating system, thus making it more difficult to remove. Then we take the machine and we re-image it because if we can't find, figure out how to find it, we just re-image it. So this just came in. Uh, malware bytes discovered new fruit fly. Malware running antiquated code on Mac OS. Um, so they said they just discovered it. That they called the first Mac, Mac malware of 2017. Um, has been used in targeted attacks at biomedical research institutions. And it's basically called the OSX.backdoor.crimichin yeah, code that, that dates before OSX. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was interesting anyway. So, what do you do if you receive phishing email? Or like you said earlier, um, mm -hmm. you just report it to abuse. Okay, with the original email header attached to pre preserve its header information. So that way the security team can review the me message and advise if it's legit. The security team can also take measures to block it. That's the key right there. They can block these fraudulent uh, websites. So if you're in Outlook, it shows you on Windows, use an Outlook with Purdue Exchange uh, service, which we all have. You can create a new message and choose attach item. So instead of hitting just the attach button, hit the little arrow right there. Mm -hmm. So you, you hit that little arrow, then you click down to where it says Outlook item. And then so when you hit that, attach the email as a question. That's in question, the one that you had the spam on, or, or the phishing email. Uh, on a Mac, mm -hmm. it's a control, right click or control click, click on a suspicious message and choose forward special as. So it's a little bit different. Um, here's how McAfee detects phishing. Uh, it pops up this window. This whole window will pop up. Uh, I just went to a browser the other yesterday, and I got one of these. It just popped up out of nowhere. I mean, I don't know. What, I was just, I was just, uh, just. Um, I don't forgot what I was doing, but this thing came up. The thing, so this one says two malware detected on your system. The thing you want to watch for is this right here. Make sure it was cleaned. So when I went to look for it, it was gone. So it was already gone. Yeah, they, they detect the type that was detected is a Trojan. Um, I have more of these, but I didn't, didn't want to besiege you with all these, <laughs> these malware uh, detections. Um, so you can see that malware can be a phishing or uh, as well as a spam or um, basically a phishing. Um, so that's what the, our McAfee will do for us so is, is catch these guys. If it doesn't clean it right here, then we need to have that machine. We need to get it and, uh, and if, you don't, if you don't know us, if we will get noticed from it. Our system admins will send us a notice, a ticket, and then they'll say, "Hey, go contact these people and check out why they're spamming or why they're why they're getting a security notice while we're getting it, why ITAP's getting it." I guess. Questions and answers time. Anybody have any questions? What was the difference between spam and phishing? You said? Spam and phishing. Mm -hmm. Spam is just junk mail mm -hmm. from from businesses. Mm -hmm. you know? Phishing is that it'll have a link in there wanting personal information, okay? Uh, whereas spam is that they just want to sell you drugs, so they want to sell you something. 
they want they want you to buy from their company or something. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, fishing they're they're digging for something. That's why it's called fishing. We're, we're fishing for fish, you know. We're fishing for suckers, you know. Okay. <laughs> I just don't look like that. How did these go through produce system to our inbox? You know, like I thought, like they didn't they like don't they like a block yeah. there and they would like to say okay here's the you know every day we will receive that <coughs> right say well number one they, they they're so elusive that and there's thousands and ITAP can't catch them all they can catch a lot of them they get the pure message spam box you get at right. the end of the yeah. day at four o'clock you can <laughs> if you ever looked at those you usually get about hundreds of them and uh, they've blocked a lot of them but they can't block everything so um, they look for keywords. Uh, and anything else that you might be able to shed? Yeah, what well, they'll do is uh, there'll be certain like we get a rash of you know a certain email that goes out to everybody, and so then they do the search for keywords or you know there there's some pattern that they start to see, and so then we block based on that pattern. But you don't want to block you know too much because then you're going to get legitimate emails that are going to end up in your spam filter. So they tend to err on the side of what well, we want you to get the emails that you want to get, and you know, occasionally mm -hmm. you get the ones you don't. And by the time we figure out a filter to put on there, the spammers have figured out a way around it. And so it takes them a while to catch up you know, to do that. And one other thing that it, it actually will lead into uh, the next presentation is if Typically, with the phishing emails, you'll also you'll get the link to click here to change your password mm -hmm. and to verify your account, do whatever. Um, here at Purdue, at least in the College of Liberal Arts, if you get a message and you, it's time for you to change your email, you should never go to a website to do that. Uh, the preferred method for you to change your password is to do it from your office computer. On a PC, you would hit Control Alt Delete after you've already logged into the computer, and you will see change your password as uh -huh. one of the options mm -hmm. and so you click on that and that's how you change your password on a mac you go into system preferences users and groups and you change your password there so you should never be following a link anyway to change your password because that uh, if you uh, change it the way i just described then you're not going to have keychain issues on a mac and it's just going to cause you know a lot less grief than you know having to be at home and Connect to the VPN first, and you know it takes it a while for it to get updated and that kind of thing. So that's the preferred way. Um, they're also probably going to hit on uh, two-factor authentication, uh, which is another thing you can do to protect yourself. Um, and you probably also want to look into getting a password uh, program because uh, the safest way to uh, protect your accounts is to have a separate password for each one of your accounts and not use the same one over and over again. Um, so anyway, just kind of wanted to share that. So this will tie right into the next session that's coming up. Mark says, yeah. When is the next session? Don't know. When is it? April 12th. April 12th. <laughs> Oh, I was a question that when we use Amazon company like Amazon, yeah. is it like that they just automatically put that ad where? Mm. You know, because it's like every time I shop, <laughs> then something pop up, you know, even at, uh, in my office computer. You know, mm. it's like the kind of they know where you are and then they just, you know, if it's a Gmail and they just like, doesn't matter where you're logging, right? And then they just pop up and then, yeah, they're really good at, at uh, using cookies to their advantage because, you know, like at Christmas time, I have an eight-year-old niece, and so I'm getting, you know, uh, Ramona, the past, or whatever, and then all my ads for the next couple weeks are going to be about things geared to an eight-year-old girl. Uh, so, um, but for those that are harmless, right? It's just annoying, but they are. Yeah, they are I mean, if you get concerned about it, there is software, like ad blocking software that will stop that from happening. But, it won't become a chore. Like they put it there, and then they also, you know, give you some malware. Because, like, obviously we got it without our consent to say, hey, is this okay? We put it on your <laughs> right, and then you just kind of automatically got got that. But I just wondering, you know, where is it really create some harm to 
power computer or just like something that we just have to live up with, you know? Yeah, basically, <laughs> basically you have to live with it, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Can you give an example of if I can get a Trojan horse? You said it comes with packaged software. So, right. What does that um, look like? <laughs> well, you won't be. You won't see it. Okay. It's it's hidden in the. Uh, um, it's hidden in this right there file path mm -hmm. right here. Look how far deep it goes. Look how long they. Okay. Um, um, this is a, a directory that's that's uh, that we don't have. We you don't have a normal access to. Mm -hmm. It just got. It just keeps going, and uh, um, and this is this was done. It says access by process mail. I, I'm not sure what that means, but I think it means it came from the email. But but I was on the website. Of course, this is a different one than the one I got. Um, um, this is an earlier one, so that could have come from an email. But yeah, there's no way of telling what those Trojan horses look like. I mean, it, it, they come in and then and, and it starts installing software and it puts it somewhere, mm -hmm. and then um, it, it starts generating its own you know, little workaround. And that trash your software system that you have installed? Only if you allow it to, but that's what McAfee does is it catches this stuff and uh, gets it rid of it beforehand. And if we don't catch it, if it doesn't catch it, and we go call you and say, hey, we have, we've got detected malware on your machine, we have to investigate it because mm -hmm. it didn't get cleaned or something. We got a, um, a notice from ITAP saying, you know, there's something going on with this machine, so we'll, we contact you and we'll Try to get your data off first if we can, and then wipe the machine and rebuild it. Sometimes you'll see it where uh, it, it's a piece of software that you want to install. Like and it could be like either a bogus, like uh, you know, update your flash player, and you got to do that. And then you, sometimes you have the option of like don't make MSN by like search engine or right. you know, whatever. Um, but a lot of times they don't give you that option, and you, what you'll see is afterwards, I got this ask toolbar in my browser, or you know, there's you know, it's kind of a pain to get rid of. So yeah. that kind of stuff happens. I have a question. I don't know if it's related to the, the every now and then when I try to download a document, right? Even from my own, like I send it to myself, right? Then I get a message you say download this will harm your computer. <laughs> did, right? Is that, did you I mean I, I actually got it several times, even download my own. I sent it to myself, you know. So why that message appeared? I mean how trustworthy because it's kinda of like cry wolf now. It's like a, it tell you all the time and then it never nothing never happened and then just kinda of like, you know. So but See, you knew that message was kind of, well, you know your your email was legit. You knew your your download was legit. Okay? Uh -huh. It doesn't know that, so it's asking It just automatically it. just say if it's from a certain kind of source and it just warns you that it can harm your computer. Well, some of you, it's, it's like any kind of uh, document, like a .doc or a .txt or whatever, like any of those you know, attachments could potentially have a virus in, in it. So it's just saying, hey, just a heads up, if you don't know this person or know where it came from, I wouldn't open it because it could oh, okay. damage your computer. It's just a warning. You know, even though you knew it, it's okay. You know, so you just have to dismiss the message. I see.